Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. I don't know what I'm pointing at. Uh, my son behind the camera. I'm at my brother's shop and um, he's not here and this intro sucks. <laughs> yeah, just... Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son behind the camera as usual. And we are at my brother's shop out in the parking lot this time working on a Ford Fusion with an air conditioning problem. As you can see in my hand, I hold a used climate control module right the display the control panel that is the module see the connectors on the back this thing talks on the can network and we have a suspicion that the one in this car is faulty um, i was talking with my brother over the phone about um, looking at all the inputs and the ac clutch is not turning on that's the scenario we're in ac clutch not turning on all the requests are there all of the inputs are there and um, my brother was able to find a module for 50 bucks. So it was one of those things where, how much time do you want to put in the car as opposed to rolling the dice on 50 bucks and trying it? Uh, that's where we're at. So we're gonna put this in, but before we do, I wanna walk you through the steps my, my brother went through and uh, see if we can confirm that this is in fact faulty. How many do you need? I don't know, a couple. All right, so we're using the um, Autel Maxi Sys Ultra again today. A um, uh, quick mention for battery life on this thing. This screen is huge. And we were super impressed the last time we used this on battery life. We had filmed for two and a half hours with a two and a half hour screen recording, and I still had 61% battery life. So pretty impressed by that. We'll include this part, Caleb, when you, uh, sometimes in your edits, you'll cut out what I'm doing when I'm identifying the vehicle, but I think we include this part for our viewers just so they can see a little bit difference with the Autel compared to the Snap on what we've been using as far as identification of a car goes. And we haven't shown a Ford yet, so this is a Ford. I believe it's a 2010. Yeah, A is 2010. It'll tell us that here in a second. It is a Fusion. 2.5 that's nice so no rpo codes we had to identify that was uh unique to gm and so some feedback i got from you guys is uh one of the things autel does is kind of mimics factory tooling and the gm techs out there are used to getting those questions for rpo codes um to identify the vehicle that's just how gm does it so that's how autel did it and so this being a Ford looks like it's a little different. I didn't ask me for any of that weird stuff. As you can see on the display here, there is no navigation system available. So this is not equipped. So I'm gonna select not equipped. All right, so this is the topology on this car. This is pretty cool how Autel lays out the communication network and uh, purple trace. You see the coating at the bottom. Purple trace is our medium speed can, the purple lines, the blue trace is um, the I can and the uh, red trace is the HS can or high speed can. I don't know what the I can is. I'm not sure. Let's do a, we'll just do a fault scan on all of them. And you see what it does is it runs through the modules. It'll tell you which ones are talking, which ones aren't. This doesn't have four wheel drive. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit misleading where the four x four says no response. This doesn't have four wheel drive. This is not a four wheel drive vehicle. So it's something to consider. So this PAM, the SODL and SODR, you can click on those for a definition. Parking aid module. That's pretty cool. I like that. I didn't know that when I was using this the first time. Side obstacle detection control module and that'd be left and right. So this, this doesn't have those units. And then the ones we have codes in, we have two in the HVAC system, three in the IPC, that's instrument panel, control module, APIM, what is that? Accessory protocol interface, one in the PCM, one in the audio control module. And so we can enter each module from here, I believe. Yeah, we'll go PCM first, we'll read that one. Trouble codes, we want continuous memory, now, this is not in for anything other than the AC uh, system not working properly. So I'm, I'm looking at the engine computer because, you know, it's part of the AC system. It is what controls the clutch is the engine computer. Uh, air conditioning clutch relay control circuit code. So I need to call my brother real quick and find out. I know he was messing with some things. Uh, let me go grab my phone. I'll be right back. 
Danner is in Myrtle Beach. They just got hit by a hurricane last night. That Isaiah, Isaias or whatever hurricane they named it. Some weird name. It was a Cat 1 when it hit, made landfall just right next to them. And they're in a, a trailer. He's at the beach now, so I don't know that I'm going to get him. But I'm pretty sure that he was playing around. I know he was playing around in here. So we may disregard this AC clutch relay control circuit code. You know, we can always clear it. Your call has been forwarded. Um, what I'm going to do for this code, I'm going to erase it. And then I'm going to start this quick shot down here on the climate control panel, Caleb. I know you, I know you, can, you guys, these buttons are all worn off, but I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the air, the air on. There's my AC button right there. You see the little LED. Okay. So that's air on. And then I'll turn the blower down so that's not so loud to you guys. But you see the button for the AC is on. And I do not have a relay fault code that came back in the engine computer. I am 99.9% .9 sure that my brother set that trouble code. And you see our P1000 code uh, here with our engine computer, which is when you clear codes, you'll have that. So I'm not worried about the PCM code that we had. Uh, why is that showing me one code again? Because really that's not a code. Usually a 1000 code wouldn't be identified as a trouble code, but you know, this, this is a little bit different of a tool. And this, this is certainly slower on this car than I've seen on the other cars we worked on as far as navigation between screens. It, it tends to scroll a little bit more uh, on this Ford. But yeah, that's the only code that's there. So that's weird that it's on the topology that it's flagging that as a code anyway. Let's look at the IPC next. I know we have an HVAC module um, codes too, which of course will be our primary ones, but I'm looking at all the other ones too. I think there's another way to do this than the way I'm doing it as well. I don't think I have to click each one individually. That's just the instrument panel going through a self check. So anti-theft system key, lost communication with compass module, invalid data from compass module I think we'll just put that in the back of the, our minds for the moment uh, let's see list oh, cool all right so I just went from the top I hit list instead of going into each module individually now I can I can just scroll all of them and look uh, look at the faults that are there audio control module lost communication with front control interface module What's front controls interface module? The uh, accessory protocol interface module is also telling me that. But on the front controls interface module, it says pass, no fault. I don't think my brother had some of this stuff disconnected too. Okay, left front and right front heater circuit faults on the HVAC system. We're going to erase all these fault codes in, in this invalid data from compass control module those came back so this is the intelligent diagnostics button that i just hit i'm just familiarizing myself with the tool here let's see what kind of info we can get from from this kind of stinks to not have air right now doesn't it caleb it's a little bit warm out here i believe this connects to the internet and i have one bar we're outside so some of this delay may be in that aspect not necessarily the tool. Okay, this isn't doing crap for me here. So we're not gonna go after that right now. Um, I'll, I'll use my other service info for that. I think I might be a little bit too far away from the router. Uh, let's focus on the um, HVAC system. Let's get out of here. This is taking too long between screens on this car. It's really annoying right now. I don't like it. What I'm interested in right now is the um, commands and the inputs. So is the, um, all the buttons when I hit them, are we getting that command? And so uh, we'll just start with the auto button. We can look at this guy right here. It says inactive and I come down here and hit the auto button. And I would imagine in the auto mode that that would say active. 
about staying inactive. Another one would be this one, the air conditioning switch, which is that guy. That's off. And that's on. And that's staying inactive. Why? Let's try the defrost. That's definitely went to defrost. Let's turn this blower down a little bit. Those are staying inactive. Um, let's do the top one, the recirc. So inside outside air would be this button. Now that changed, it says NA. Hit it again. And what? Okay, fresh air. And that's recirc, although the value says NA. That's goofy. Did you turn your heated seat on? Did you hit that button? No. It was on. Is that why my back is sweating? <laughs> Your heated seat was on. Is it working? <clears throat> that feels pretty warm. So we had codes for the heated seat. I wonder if maybe it sets fault codes when those are on. Um, anyway, the AC uh, fresh air worked. The air conditioning switch is staying inactive. Uh, air conditioning status is remaining off. The auto didn't work. Blower speed, let's do that one. Right now it's showing 27%. Um, and as I push the button you see that number is increasing so that's functional when I did the defrost that didn't change it's saying no trouble codes at the moment um, let's do the driver's heated seat I just turned that on yeah that's that's turning off so um, I remember remember with mom's car Caleb when there was a problem with the heated seat how it would turn on then turn off so there's a problem with the heated seats so we won't worry about that um, so dual zone is going to be going to be this guy. So we turn passenger on and I did notice this was delayed with some other stuff. It says inactive for why, why is that like nothing working here? Fan, what fan? Okay. That's every time I hit that button, that's saying active. That's fan positive. I hit this button. Yeah, that's saying active every time I hit it. All right, um, let's do floor. Yep, every time I hit that button, so that's good. This gives me a little bit more confidence in what we're looking at. Let's do floor defrost, which is this one. Yep, push the button in, hold it in, says active, release it, inactive. Front blower relay is on, heated front windshield. I don't think this has. Interior temp sensor is 31 degrees. That's Celsius. I still got to figure out how to change this to a Fahrenheit scale. I don't know Celsius. Uh, left blend door position. This guy. So that'd be this one. That's cold. If I turn it to the right, it should say hot. Yep. Well, that's functioning like it should be. You see the blend door position. There'd be a potentiometer inside the blend door. So as you're rotating this, this is a potentiometer too. And then the door, you see the blend door position. You see that percentage changing on the screen. Um, that's the mode door itself moving. And there's a potentiometer on that as well. That's pretty cool. And then left heater, left seat heater. That's just the button and that, that works for sure. Uh, maximum AC power, module supply voltage. What is the off panel? That's that guy. So off, middle button is off. Panel floor. Yeah, these are all working. This doesn't have cold seats, but it has heated ones. So if I hit the passenger button, passenger heated seat, and yeah, that works. Rear defo defrost is that guy. Heated backlight, what is the heated backlight? And that says heated backlight off, heated backlight on, and then you hit that switch, you see it say active. So it's this one, inactive to active. 
rear fan I'm not worried about the rear do we have rear fan on this does it look like it rear temp recirculation switch that works right blend door position all of these seem to be functioning except the ones that that were important to us the air conditioning switch up top when I hit that guy that's staying inactive oh no there it is I just didn't hold I just didn't hold it in long enough anyway that is functioning so I was wrong in that and then the auto button too let's hold hold that in okay So it's a little bit misleading the way that, I just heard, did you hear the AC just turned on? I just heard the AC turn on. After playing with all these buttons, now the AC, I just heard the clutch turn on. We're gonna, we're gonna feel some cold air now, which will be nice. Oh, it was on for a second. But if I, if looking at this info on here, if I momentarily hit it, notice nothing changes. Oh, you just saw it barely. But if I hold it in, it says active. Let go, inactive. Auto button, same thing, watch. Hold it in, active. Oh. Interesting. It came on for a second. You would think though, like, this is more of a, of a scan tool issue in my opinion. It shouldn't say inactive. If I have the auto button highlighted, and you can see the LED is on, it should say on the scan tool, the state should change. It still says inactive. But if I hold it in, it now says active. And that's just, and now the, now the AC just turned on. So, I mean, maybe what we're looking at is a faulty control panel, or is this data on here that the Autel is showing me that is just, a factor of the autel and the way that it's interpreting this data i, I really want to put my varus on here and, and do a comparison on this feature right here but that's kind of cool if i hold the auto button in i can make the ac turn on you see the air conditioning status just went to on if i continue to nope and it just shut off now i can't shut it off how weird is that it worked a couple times. There, it's back on now. All right, so all of the buttons are working on here. We are getting a um, display change on all of these buttons. I was incorrect on the ones I said aren't working. I just wasn't giving it enough time. Like the defrost didn't work too. Let's watch that one one more time. If I hold that in, you see it says active. If I let it go, it says inactive. And what I was assuming is LED uh, light on, it should say Right now it says inactive. Turn that LED off, which is defrost is off. On the scan tool, it still says inactive. But if I hold the button in, you see a change of state there. There's nothing wrong with that switch. We have a display issue that, that shouldn't be giving me the information like that, in my opinion. And the air just turned on again. So uh, everything on here is at least functional the way it should be. Let's go to the engine computer now and see um, what we're well, wait, let's see what active tests are available to me first here. So I can change blower speed. I can do outside, inside air, blend door position. Um, I'm not interested in any of that for what we're doing. So we're gonna get out of here and I wanna go to my engine computer, which is the one that controls the clutch. What my brother had told me is he could see the AC request signal was dropping out and that AC request signal would be this climate control module talking to the engine computer and it says hey we're requesting ac via the can network it doesn't have a specific request line that comes into the engine computer i think i looked that up on a diagram when dan and i were talking on the phone and what he told me is he could see the request signal dropping out and he could take the scan tool in a bi-directional mode and he can make the clutch run all day long and so what's that tell us about the output side of the system Computer controls, a relay, relay controls the clutch. How's the computer? How's the wiring? How's the relay? How's the clutch? If I can bi-directionally turn this AC compressor on with the scan tool, it's all good. So our problem's on the input side. So then on the input side on this system, there is no input directly. 
it's a communication between two modules. So that's where we are. Um, let's go live data. All right, so looks like one data list. And so we'll pull up all of our AC data. I just heard the clutch turn on. Um, we'll, we'll also pull up things that the engine computer would um, turn the clutch off. So like cylinder head temperature, cylinder head voltage, throttle position. Barometric pressure is not gonna affect that. Battery voltage, it's possible. A brake pedal, no. You apply your brakes, your AC is not gonna turn off. You go wide open throttle, it will. If your engine's overheating, it will turn it off. Commanded throttle actuators, we'll pull that up. Cylinder head temp, idle speed I'm not worried about. O2s, EGR, not worried about. EVAP, no. Electronic throttle, throttle code. To miss, run time. Injectors, intake air. Variable cam time, I'm not worried about any of that. All right, so I thought this had an EVAP temp sensor, but that must be on the on the air conditioning side. And so let's just show the selected PIDs and request signal, no. Even though my AC button is on, my request signal, let's watch it on the scan tool. When we have a clutch uh, engage, we can hear it too. Let's watch this request signal, which is this guy right here in the middle. I'll leave that one unchecked for the edit scale that'll help you. That's the one we're watching right now. It says no. And I've been hearing the clutch just turned on. I just heard, heard the clutch turn on and the clutch turned off. So what are we missing? Does this make sense, Caleb? We have an AC request signal. I'm requesting the AC. When I hit that button right now and I, I request, it's me, my finger, I'm requesting AC. The engine computer is seeing no for a request signal. And so then you ask yourself, well, how does that signal come in? On older cars, that signal would be a direct tie-in. You'd have a wire that'd go from the climate control panel right to the engine computer, and it would be a physical switch input, right? Pull up, pull down circuitry. Chapter two material in my book, in my premium channel. This is standard stuff. It still is. This climate control panel, we still are using pull up and pull down switches for all of these. Um, so on an older car, you would need to know how to troubleshoot that circuit. Is it a wiring problem? Is it a module problem? Computer problem. On this design, there is no physical wire that goes from this to the engine computer for the request signal. Where does the request signal come from? Through the medium speed CAN network. This guy talks in zeros and ones to another module, the engine computer, in zeros and ones and says, hey, turn the AC on. All right, so here's what we can determined by this, that we see a request signal staying no, and, and when it says yes, the AC turns on, we don't have a problem with the engine computer. So if the engine computer, for example, had an overheat condition, it would shut the AC off. But what would the request signal be telling us? The request would still be there coming from the climate control panel. The engine computer would just say, no, I'm not turning you on because the engine's overheating. So the request signal would be there still. That's a good indicator. Our, our problem is not throttle position, any other inputs on the engine side, overheating, none of that are a factor in here as far as, in my opinion, as far as what's going on. This is the right call what my brother did in, in getting this module from what he was seeing. Everything is functioning. Powers and grounds is not gonna be an issue when you have a climate control panel that every button I push works and every button I see a response to on, this, on the tool, why is it requesting it off? Now, one of the things I wanna look at is back to the climate control panel and make sure we don't have like an EVAP temp sensor problem, something like that. That, that would make it uh, maybe turn off. That would make it turn off, but that would maybe make the request signal um, also turn off. You see when the clutch comes on, the request signal, you see temperatures changing on the air conditioning pressure sensor. So that's the one I just unchecked is what we're looking at. The two I'm unchecked. That is my rest pressure right now. The system's off. You see it dropping. That's high side pressure. Um, I say rest pressure because it, when the clutch isn't running, that's our pressure in the system. Watch when the request signal comes back. You'll see the high side pressure increase. 
Let's watch it one more time, then we'll get out of here. Quest is yes, pressure comes up, air gets cold, it feels great. All right, um, I can show you guys one other thing since we're here, and that is what my brother did, which is the bi-directional control. And if it'll let me do it with the engine running, it should. Um, air conditioning, compressor, commanded state. We can do these so we can see them. Switch air conditioning off. We're gonna turn this off for this test. Pressing okay. And then we turn this guy on. As soon as I turn it on, pressure comes up. It's nice and cold. It's staying on for a long period of time. It's working exactly like it should. You see, my pressures look great. Air, air feels great. Caleb and I are nice and comfortable for the first time. Um, and this is really, really to you too, Caleb. Think about the output side of this. Engine computer controls a relay. Relay, I think it does. It might be in an intelligent power distribution box, whatever. We have an output circuit that's working. Engine computer commands a relay, solid state device, whatever it is. That controls the AC compressor and the uh, air is working. And so when we command it with the scan tool, what we're doing is we're bypassing all inputs. And so if everything's working perfectly, although that pressure is really high, we're at 350 PSI. I want to see that come down. Okay, good. It's coming down. My cooling fan must have turned on. Okay, yeah. But everything's working like it should be from the output side. So there's no reason to look at wiring, relay, uh, engine computer AC compressor this is a it's an input problem it's an input problem no question about it we'll turn this off we'll get out of here Danner was correct in making this call we'll go back to our climate control panel and I just want to make sure my evap temp sensor circuit isn't isn't messed up on this because uh, they'll use a evap not evap like Ev um, the evap system for the charcoal canister and the fuel tank but evaporator so we call that an evap as well and that can be a little misleading or a little bit confusing for some but this uh, evaporator core would have a temp sensor on some cars that makes sure that the evap doesn't ice up and uh, that's an important input so we want to we want to look at that typically you'd have a, a fault code uh, for a, a component like that if it was malfunctioning, but not necessarily, it can fail in range. And so what I wanna see in this data list is hopefully evap temperature. It's that guy right there. It's showing 55 degrees. Right now my clutch is running. Put that up there. Air conditioning status is on. Right now it's working fine. And this is the complaint by the customer. Some days it worked great, other days it would not. We're just gonna watch this for a second. I wanna make sure my EVAP temperature is not a factor here. We're at 35 degrees now, it's showing. Yeah, air conditioning is off. It just turned back on. We wanna look at a, a coordination between these two. Now we can watch the EVAP temperature in a graph. So there's no reason why that it should be off right now, our air conditioning status. My air is my air is warm, although my EVAP temperature is saying 33 degrees. At 33 degrees of EVAP temperature, it might want to turn it off. Let's watch this and see when the, uh, just, it just went from 33 to 73. And then the air conditioning status came back on. Dude, this, this is an EVAP temp sensor fault. It's not this climate control panel. Watch it again. We're at 50 degrees of EVAP temperature. My state is on at 48 it went from 33 to 73 in a split second that never happens that doesn't happen with a temp sensor see that glitch see that drop now we're at 35 it just shut off and it's fixed that should slowly climb up 35 41 it did just came back on watch the status of the i wish i could make that graph too but watch the now we're off at 35 and it's steady. That's climbing finally. It's definitely not holding at 39 with the AC off. It just dropped to 37. The AC AC still off. Kick the 
floor underneath just kick it somewhere in there it just dropped to 33 when you did, did that, you hear that? <laughs> we have an evap temp sensor fault i'm not putting this climate control panel in here systems off we're at 38 or 33 degrees the reason this is shutting it off is it just went from 33 to 73 like that should not happen it should never happen it should never happen now the question is where is the evap temp sensor can we get to it easily i'm thinking that we can't yeah see that sudden drop look we're holding at 37 degrees with the air conditioning status off now watch it when it comes back on. We'll see a spike. It'll, it'll jump up. It'll go off the screen though. Let's set our X, Y, X, our axis. Axis, yes. Yeah. Set axis. Y, X. Let's go minimum. Let's go minimum. We'll go uh, 20 and maximum we'll go um, 85. That didn't work. Where did it go? <laughs> Set Y axis minimum zero, maximum 80. Why does it say zero to 20? Is it setting that in Celsius? Is 80, 20? Bastards. I have it set for Fahrenheit. EVAP temperature Fahrenheit. Set Y, right? Let's, let's try, uh, let's see, 100 degrees Celsius is what, 212 for water? Sure. What? Why is it 25? I just, okay, that's not, I'm doing something wrong. Minimum, zero, maximum, 200. And now it shows me 50? What? Zero, let's go 250. A stupid graph. All right, 35 degrees. Evap would be in a normal state right now. You would shut the AC off because 35 is cold. And you see the off status. Now we're at 33.8. We don't go from 35 to 33 with the AC off. That doesn't happen. Bam, just went to 73. AC turned back on. That shouldn't happen either. Should not happen either. This still could be a faulty climate control panel because that's what controls the EVAP temp sensor. But what we need to do to confirm that is go right to the temperature sensor itself and do some voltage measurements. If we can, if we can. Oh, that's dumb. That's why I was zoomed all the way out. There's my, there's my zero to 250. Okay, let's go zero to 85. There we go. <laughs> that was zoomed in, that's why. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Now you guys can watch the interactions. Let's move this one. Let's move this one to the top. You guys can look at these together. And again, ignore the air conditioning switch that says inactive. For whatever reason, it's, it's reporting that way, but that switch is fine if I hold it in. One more time. Air conditioning switch is what we're looking at. Active. That's the way it should stay. I believe that that is a scan tool issue. I'm not worried about that. Just the way it's displaying that data. I, I do not think that that is a problem at all. Just something that can throw you for a loop. And what we're looking for is the HVAC diagram for the EVAP temp sensor. Um, automatic AC except hybrid. We don't want the hybrid one. Manual AC. So it's these first three pages. In vehicle temp sensor. I'm not worried about in vehicle temperature. I want the EVAP temp sensor. EVAP discharge air temp sensor. Left side of HVAC housing. Yeah, it's sharing a ground with all the other sensors. I'm not worried about, uh, all right, so it's a shared ground with the ambient temp sensor too. We could maybe pull that up as well. We'll watch both of those together. Interior temperature, let's pull that in. Nope, not talking to you right now. Wasn't anyone I wanted to talk to. Oh, it's Danner, we want this one. Yo. Yo. Hey, my question I think has already been answered, which is 
I had a relay code for the engine computer for the AC compressor. I would imagine you were playing around with that. No, it was there though. I asked him the same question. So did you clear those faults? I didn't clear anything. Okay, but this was at, at Pete's originally. And so yeah. I'm sure that this, it was messed around with. But anyway, um, I'm, that didn't come back. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Our issue, this has an EVAP temp sensor fault. No. Yep. I didn't change the climate control panel, um, but there's no question about it. Like I, I'm sitting here right now and the data is showing me 35 degrees on the EVAP temp sensor for the past five minutes or so and the AC has been off. And then what will happen, it'll go from right now it's at 33.8. It'll jump up from 33 to 75 in like a split second, and then the AC will come back on. And so um, it still might be a module. I don't know yet, but no, the... it wasn't. It, yeah, I don't know because I didn't see that. I mean, I saw the EVAP temp sensor at like 80 when it wasn't coming on, but I, that's fine. But I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm not sure what you're. You know, are you using the Snappy or are no, you using your? No, I'm using the Autel. Yeah, because I remember I, I even read those things off to you. The, the, there was an outside air temperature, a duct temperature, and a maybe and a duct temperature sensor. Well, the diagram shows it as EVAP discharge air temp sensor, which yeah. which would probably be duct. I don't I don't see a duct, but all I see no, that's, that's fine. all I see in my list is an interior temperature, an unfiltered external temp sensor, and they're both like eighty and eighty seven. And right now I have an EVAP temp sensor that's showing me 39 degrees and the status is off. And as soon as this temp sensor jumps back up to a, a you know, above 40 or yeah, 45. I wish I would have turned on your other tool just to see what I saw. Cause I couldn't, when I saw it, it wasn't that way, but that's the way it was acting. And that's why I was like, it almost has to be a module, but I, maybe I was looking at the wrong parameter then. Whatever, I don't but, care. But you saw you saw eighty on the EVAP temperature from what you and remember, it was, and it yeah, and it wasn't coming on. And yeah. that makes me nervous. Then, that makes me nervous. But still, what I'm seeing right now, there's no question about it. This is a EVAP temp sensor that's causing our issue. Yeah, that would make um, perfect sense. That's what I was hoping to see. Yeah. So now the question is, is how do I get to it and all that? And I'm in the middle of doing that now, so we're good. I'll. I'll uh, call you back in a I bit. I want to say it's behind a glove box. I don't think it's hard on that car. Okay, cool. Uh, but I, I didn't check to see if anyone had one. Yeah, well, this says EVAP temp discharge is left side of HVAC housing. So I don't know if that means it's over. I, by think, I, still, I still think it's behind the glove box because the housing's all probably over. I don't know. Okay, cool. I, all right, cool. Okay. All right, later. All right, bye. When that hit 39 degrees, it turned the AC on for wow. a second. All right, so um, that AC compressor, yeah, with it off, there's no way that we should be hanging around the 33 degrees. Um, I was just tr graphing these other ones too while you were getting a new battery and check this out. I really like this feature, um, graphing this data. And then what you can do, so I have three graphed ones I wanna look at. I can merge them, graph those. And then that condenses our, our data display right there. How cool is that? Because really air conditioning status is the only one we need to see. And then all three graphs and blue traces, my EVAP temperature. Yeah, it's definitely wigging out. So one of the things that made me do that was looking at this diagram and seeing the ambient temperature and EVAP temperature share the same ground. And so what I'm addressing right now with the fluctuations of the EVAP is that it's not a bad ground they're shared i mean you could have a leg of it that's off but i just wanted to point that out that's pretty cool v ref r e t so is that my ground hold on let's go to the signal wire signal wires that guy that guy of the evap temperature sensor where does it go goes to pin six of the climate control panel so we might have to be in there and do some checks I hope not but maybe what you guys are looking at on this graph may look normal to you you see the up down graph we're hovering around you know 35 to 39 degrees and the AC is turning on and off the problem is it's not that cold right our interior look at the interior temperature you see it's getting warmer it's hot in here it's 90 freaking degrees in here we're not hanging around that area, so 
It's not doing what it was doing before going from 33 to 75, but we still have an issue because with the air off, right now my discharge air temperature, you know, that feels to be about 65 degrees, 70 degrees, and it's warming up, warming up, warming up, still getting hot, still getting hot. You see the temperature rising, but it's way off, way skewed number, way skewed. Removal and install, let's see. It's located in the top of the air box way up there and how do I get to it remove the instrument panel <laughs> refer to removal and installation rotate the evap discharge air temp sensor counterclockwise pull upward to detach it from the heater core and evap housing disconnect the AC evap discharge air temp sensor electrical connection remove the temp sensor so I have to remove the instrument panel to get to it what is removal and install of the instrument panel involve? Remove the steering wheel. Remove the floor console. Remove the selector lever or gear shift lever. Remove the left hand and right hand instrument panel side. Pull the sides, remove. So what are we talking about here? If I'm removing the steering wheel, oh my goodness, this is a huge job. This is a huge job. We're not gonna be showing this, Caleb. I guess the good thing for us is we're not showing this because we're not doing this repair. Danner's going to end up doing it. He's going to he's going to have to schedule it too. Um, I just want to prove to everyone if I can this evap temp sensor is faulty. Let's get a time here if this will give it to me. And it said remove the instrument panel. <laughs> <laughs> it's 6.9 hours. What? to change the evap temp sensor oh my god <laughs> i'm calling danner he's not gonna be happy he's not gonna be happy i think i'm gonna pull this climate box i don't know call me back danner your call has been wow oh, i have danner call us back all right now to prove this temp sensor is faulty I mean, I can't, I can't even get to it. I can't even get to it. I'm just gonna beat on the dash a little bit. I don't even know where it's at, but let's see if we can make this thing act up. Here, we'll, we'll leave the air off for a minute. Watch how long this takes to, to warm back up. This is air off. Problem with something like this is like, you can't, you can't really bypass it. You know, we could plug in a resistor that's makes it 42 degrees all the time or something, you know what I mean? And it would keep the compressor running, but the problem with that is it will ice it up. Yeah, there's no way that I'm 42 degrees. It's hot as freaking balls in here. Skewed temp sensor. I'm gonna see if I can even like see anything up in this area. It said remove the instrument panel, which is like remove everything you're looking at is essentially what it what it was saying. Air has been off for a while and it's still at 42 degrees. Let's see if I can make this sensor start reading. I'm just trying to. Usually when temp sensors get skewed, you can make them change by vibrating the connectors and stuff and yeah dude that's about 90 degrees of discharge air evap temperature still saying 42 it's been off for a while if i turn the air on right now it's gonna work and it just did just turned on heard the clutch we see the command status temperatures dropping problem is is it's just so far skewed and now it turned it back off. It's not 35 degrees. That dropped my discharge air to maybe 70 momentarily. Uh, I just turned the air back off. You guys can watch that temperature display. Yeah, that thing's like buried at the top. Very top. What are we, what are we showing temperature wise? 42. 42? Yeah. It's not really changing. Tell me if it changes, I'm gonna wiggle some wiring, okay? Nothing. 
to see, maybe see the wiring for it. That kind of sucks that they put that temp sensor like up there, man. Cause I, I literally can't get to it like at all. Um, you see how long we're at 41 degrees. Th this absolutely is our problem. There's real, no real way to test it. Well, I mean, we could, given what Danner saw, uh, you know, we could pull. I just, I need to talk to Danner. I, I need to hear from him. Your call has been forwarded. Arr. I was thinking we could swap this thing out because one of the things that you can have is a an issue with a module that's not supplying the proper voltage to the sensor and the I really can't test it within the system um, however I can I can unplug the control unit and plug the new one in and I feel like just given for our viewers that would at least eliminate the variable of the computer not sending the voltage. And I'm not gonna be able to get back in there and back probe this for you guys and show you the voltage levels. But if I can show you the same thing I'm seeing right here which with another module, that would confirm 100% uh, that we have an issue with the EVAP temp sensor. Because you can still have a module that does this. All right, so what do I need to do to remove this? mentioned top trim panel he looked at this for a while and he, he told me what to do but they should be in there like that should they oh, what did I do oh, great I did I didn't break it but I like moved it off of its track oh man what did I do no it doesn't Oh no, why is that like that? I didn't do that. Yes, you did. But I didn't. But it was working fine before. It wasn't. Oh man, no. <sighs> okay, I'm, um, I'm stopping this recording, I think. I'm, I need to pull, I need to fix this. So I gotta pull this apart now, I don't have a choice. All right, All right. while you were gone, uh, Caleb went and got us lunch. I changed the climate control panel. You can get a shot right here real quick. Cheese sticks. Thanks, Caleb, for the phlegm. Everyone appreciates this. Caleb went and got us lunch while I was tearing the dash uh, panels apart so I could get to the climate control panel and I changed it just because I wanted to prove to everyone that it wasn't a module fault within the thermistor circuit. And so some of you are gonna need a little bit more training with thermistors. This would be chapter six material that I'm talking about. And a thermistor is one where the computer is gonna send out five volts across a fixed resistor inside of the module. And then we have a variable resistor external. And so really what it's looking at is a voltage um, potential between two resistors is what the computer is looking at. And as the external resistor um, tightens up or gets higher resistance, the pressure backs up and voltage will be high. As the external resistor opens up and drops pressure, voltage, um, the computer uh, sees that and that'll be a lower voltage signal. So a less resistance, low voltage, high resistance, high voltage. It's kind of weird talking about it like that, but that's the way it works. And one of the things that can happen, it's very unusual to happen, but what can happen is the module cannot send the proper voltage out to the thermistor. And so you wanna make sure before you sell a seven hour job pulling the dash apart that the module's not at fault and there would be some checks you would need to do at the module. <clears throat> <clears throat> sucks but given we had another module it allowed me to side step some tests that are difficult to do when you can't get to the thermistor 
And that was just swapping the module over and showing you guys that we have the exact same problem. And so we have a, the module sitting here, it is plugged in. Let's go back to our live data and wanna show you guys we have the exact same problem. So as you can see here, guys, we're at 42 degrees and I have not had the air on. We should not be at 42 degrees. Um, the exterior temperature is showing 100 outside. Uh, that's just because of underhood temperatures and we're sitting still and uh, it could be a calibration issue with this module too. So, but watch, I'll turn it, I'll turn the air back on again. We'll hit the on off button and then AC, just heard the clutch turn on, 37, 35. As soon as we hit 35 degrees, shuts it off. Same exact problem that we had before. I can't get to the temp sensor. I can't identify the wiring to it. And so what this test has shown us is it's not the module that's not sending out the proper voltage. Um, both modules acting the same way. Uh, it was nice to have one and um, this needs a temp sensor. Now you could make the argument there's a wiring problem in between, but that's gonna be something you're gonna check when you pull the dash apart. At this point in time, it's Tanner, perfect timing. At this point in time, um, uh, wiring and sensor would go together. You check that when you pull the dash apart. So I just a quick heads up, Danner, on where we're at. Yes. Um, I did swap the module and I was just uh, filling our community in here uh, with why I swapped the module. I did that just to make sure that we didn't have a five volt reference problem on the thermistor circuit um, in that maybe the module was sending out low voltage to the sensor. Sure. And so I decided to swap it and I'm showing the exact same thing. Like right now the air is off and it's stuck at 33 degrees. I was just telling the community that that, that tells us the module's perfectly fine and that the only thing that's left is wiring and then the sensor itself. And I said, you know, you can't get to any of that. So that gets sold with the job. And um, it's a seven hour job to get to the temp sensor according to Mitchell. So unfortunately, um, that's not an easy repair and uh um i thought so you're seeing you're seeing 30 degrees because see uh, that's weird because i saw no action at all for like you know a whole day not constantly but a whole day and i was not seeing it never even kicked on and it was the same temperature as ambient temperature the evap was yeah which is weird that's uh, that's fine I, i'm glad you saw it because that would make sense with all of the well, I know, but that that bothers me what you're saying. Like cuz I didn't see that. Right now, right now the air has been off the entire time we've been talking and um what well, I'm sorry, the air it just it just turned back on like literally just now. But I'm before I uh turned the camera back on, I had it off for an hour almost and I was reading 41 degrees on the EVAP temp sensor. Wow. So, I mean, clearly, you know, it's all, it's in the low 80s today. <clears throat> um the temp sensor skewed, no question about it. So, but it does bother me what you're saying, you know, as far as you saw 80 degrees on the EVAP temperature. And nothing was kicking and off. And you're positive, yeah. you're positive of that. I mean, is it possible you were looking at the wrong data parameter? Cause I have an, I have an interior temp sensor that's 82 degrees. And then I have a uh, unfiltered external temp sensor that's 95 degrees. Do you remember seeing three different temp sensor signals? And the one you're seeing is actually, so what was the first one you said? Interior temp. Yeah, now I'm not using, I'm not using the, um, the Varus, I'm using the Autel, so. Yeah. But yeah, I have three different temp sensor readings on the EVAP data, and it's EVAP temperature, interior temperature, unfiltered external temperature. I saw unfiltered external, can you see where my, can you see my I, I saw the unfiltered external and I saw the interior. I, you know what, I'm, I'm, I, I'll be lying to you for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm but sure. I, I, I thought that whenever, whenever I talked to you just not too long ago that there were three different temperatures I had to look at. I remember and we talked about it and we even and, talked and about none the- of them, None of them were like, it, like, where they shouldn't have been. You know well, here, I mean? here's here's the facts right now. I'm showing 33 degrees of EVAP temperature. My discharge air is like 65, 70 degrees. Yeah. And uh, my AC is off. Like the command status is off. And as soon as this number hits like 
37 to 39, it kicks it back on. That's great. Okay. Well, I mean, that, so that's, that's, I mean, it at least proves our fault right now. Yeah. It, yeah. As soon as it hits 37, it, it kicked back on. So 37, and then it dropped from 37 to 33, and then it kicked it back off. And what I was seeing earlier, which I haven't seen since, it would drop to 33, and then it would hold there, hold there, hold there, and then all of a sudden it jumped to 75. And then it would kick back on, and then it would drop real rapidly, almost like that was the normal temperature, that 75 number, you know? Yeah, possibly. So I don't know what you saw, but what I'm seeing right here is no I, no question yeah, attempt sensor fault. I was seeing, yeah, okay, well, no, that's cool, man. You know what I mean? Because I, I did not look at scan data whenever the AC was working intermittently. Okay. I only was looking at it when it was off. And I'm, I want to say that I could not see all... Yeah, you know, I can't remember, dude. I, I think I couldn't see the exterior temperature on... One of them I had to go under engine, I thought, to get. But I, there was three of them, and I never saw any of them, but I was, you know, I was bouncing back in and out of modules to look at stuff, and maybe I missed it. Yeah. You know, but I don't know why it didn't kick on, because I thought, that's why I was looking for that, and I thought I saw it, unless I thought, unless I saw the duct temperature and figured that was See, the, I don't even have a duct temperature sensor. You mentioned duct, and I don't well, see it. Well, what are you calling it? The, the outlet temperature. It just says ev EVAP temperature, interior temperature, and un... Interior. Okay, uh, the interior. Maybe it was just interior temperature, but I... I yeah, that's a good question. But, okay. Well, I I'm, mean, what you're, what you're finding makes sense. I, I did not want to call the module, but I yes. didn't have any time. I ran out of time, and I wanted something for you there just in case that's what it was. No, actually, it, it's helpful that I have this module. And it, granted, it was only $50, and I'm sure you could yeah. probably return it. Um, nah, I'll just eat it. Okay. I well, I think the thing about it is um, it, it allowed me to, to prove to everyone that this is not a module that wasn't sending out the proper, proper voltage. Gotcha. So you know, especially that, when it's so far, when it's so far to get. Yeah, and I mean, the only real way to confirm that is you get to the temp sensor, you unplug it, and then you check for a five volt at the sensor. And I can't do that. I can't do okay. that. So. So where is it? You got to pull the whole AC block. Yeah, out. it's up on top. Yeah, the whole clump uh, panel's got to come out. But listen, I talked to Bill, and I I told him where we are. And I said, I mean, I can, I can wire in a resistor and make this work. The, on, the only problem is we're not going to have de-icing controls. Yeah, because it'll shut off under temperatures under with the pressure switch if there's something wrong on that side. Or pressures if there were to happen to like get too cold and ice. But Yeah, but if it gets too cold and ice, is all that's going to do is block the block the airflow and then freeze the evap so do you think can you think of any other damage that we may cause by putting a resistor in this because he was all for it he don't want to spend the money it's too much money it's yeah. six hundred dollars in labor probably to to, yeah. to do this you know yeah what do you think what, what should we do if it was my car I, i'd try it yeah i mean she's gonna drive back to like Where's she going? Tennessee oh, or something? Something like that. Want me to do it? He wants me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I well, mean, can you get to those wires? Easy? Yeah, yeah, I can do it right at the back of the module. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wire in a resistor right, right here at the back of the module and, and make it happen. I'll, I'll make it read 40 degrees all the time, or 50 degrees, or 60. It doesn't really matter as long as the clutch is on. You know? For sure. But I mean, it, we do risk, it's gonna happen, it will ice up. So, I mean, what damage, you know, when it ices up, it's icing up on the outside. It's the, the inside's not really as, as important. Yes. It's yeah, the, but your, your pressure, you're not gonna be, your head pressures are gonna go high eventually if you. Well, it's got a high, a it's, got, it's got a high pressure sensor, but it wouldn't be a clog in the, in the actual AC system. It would only be an external clog. Like you'd still have refrigerant passing through. It would just be at temperatures lower than what we want them to be at. Like, uh, yeah, okay. It's not Maybe. gonna freeze internal. Our internal uh, flow is still gonna be proper. It's just gonna freeze external uh, okay. from humidity in the air and then it's gonna block it up from the outside. So I, I don't, you know, our pressures will be affected just because of heat exchange because you're not really pulling any in, but. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. 
We'll see what happens. All right, All right cool, man. You good with that? Yeah, I don't care. I, All I right. just, yeah. All right, man. Okay, man. Later. Bye. Okay, on this connector, the one I'm looking for. So we want a, a yellow green, a green violet. There's a yellow green. So we have a green violet. That looks green and violet. Just trying to find the right connector without pulling this all apart. Violet brown is my, this should be my EVAP temp sensor signal right here. I'm gonna take a reading on that guy. Oh, let me forget that. Hmm. Wow. All right, so EVAP temp, and we're reading two, 2.5 volts. Let's change our time base here. DC average, cool. Nice. So 2.4 volts, and that should be my guy. The only real way to make that determination now would be to, well, I could, I could ground that signal. I'm just trying to think of a way that I can prove this to you guys. I'm just wiggling some wire, I got it up here, but I can't really get to anything. Um, I'll just do it, right? Let's just cut it, do it. So I can fix that when I'm done. All right, make sure I don't have any other violet and brown wires. See, there's two. I just don't want to cut the wrong wire and have to fix it. Let's let's get a reading on this guy. Yeah, that one's that one's zero. So this is this is definitely my guy. And what I'll do is we'll cut it on the opposite side. This should go to five volts, and our temperature is gonna go off the chart too. So scope on the left, scan tool on the right, and uh, this this should should go to five volts. Keep your hand. Yep, we went to minus 36 degrees on the on the uh, scan tool and five volts on the, I don't know why that's showing three point. So that average voltage that's climbing. So I don't like average. Let's, can we get a real time number? Let's see. So 4.55 volts. Some of that's gonna be pulled down through my, through my scope potentially. Uh, but what we wanna do is put in a resistor not in series, but like between the sensor signal and the signal ground. My signal ground wire is what? Black and violet. We can do that. This guy here. Between here and here is where we want to put our resistor. I could use the signal ground, but I'm not worried about that. I'll just use the the uh, ground itself between those two guys. And we want a resistor that's gonna give me a number that is usable. I realize this is the used module. It's just easier to work with right now. We'll plug the other one back in when we're done. I'm gonna separate this. Yeah, black with a violet. This should be my computer ground. Pretty neat little tool right there. Just strips the wire back. Do you like that, Caleb? Mm -hmm. And then um, on this one, just to show you guys that if this being a thermistor circuit, I can take, I'll just, I can take and ground this. If I ground this, this will go the opposite way. So we went from four volts down to, down to zero. And then my EVAP temperature, you see it buried the scale, 100, 190. Um, we could, yeah, I'm not worried about doing a resistance measurement. Some of you are thinking, why don't you do a resistance measurement of the temp sensor? I don't need to. I know the temp sensor's messed up. The colder it is, the higher the voltage. I just got a bunch of random resistors, and I never remember the, the coding, the designations of them, so I'm just going to try one. We'll see what kind of number we get between the sensor and the ground. I had a number there for a second. Yeah, 176 ain't cutting it. Uh, 
I like 53 degrees. That's two volts. Feel how nice and cold the air is. Mm -hmm. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's let's wire this guy in temporarily, and then we'll we'll solder it. That true RMS, the DC average is, so I'm reading two and a half at 50, nope, EVAP temperature is showing me 35. Thought I was, thought I was at 50. Wasn't it at 50 before? Well, 35 is not cutting it. Can't do 35. 35 is an off. All right, next. I'm not even measuring these, and I should be, but I'm just trying to get this done. You guys can understand the concept. I'll, I'll measure it when we're done. 190 is not going to work. I mean, that'd probably set a fault code, is my guess. We don't need these other ones. Yeah, it's, it's actually working. Eighty seven degrees. Why did that work for a second then then stop? Oh, I'm not looking at sorry. I was looking at the right one. It's seventy five degrees. I was looking the eighty seven was unfiltered. You know what? Let me I want to cancel merging. The only one I want evap temperatures. The only one I care about. Graph that. So that is a number of 75 degrees. I don't think it's important for what we're doing. We're gonna risk icing up the EVAP, whether I set it to 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, it's not gonna matter because it's gonna stay the same all the time. The air feels really nice right now. I'm gonna put my window up. We can actually watch, I will actually graph this other one, the interior temperature so you guys can see this together we should see the in interior temperature coming down let's just let everybody see that for a minute you see the air conditioning status is on all the time or bottom right of the screen Again, the only thing we chance is icing it up, and so we just instruct the owner to tell his daughter to turn the air off on occasion, let it, let it de-ice on its own, turn it back on, and that'll at least get her air conditioning. In the meantime, she's driving to Tennessee, going back to school, and this is a huge job. He doesn't want to spend the money, so at least have air at least some of the time. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure that we're risking um, something one of you guys will probably have a comment that's like hey you know you're gonna crack the whatever evap core from ice I mean I realize icing up the evap core is not a good thing I understand that we will make the, the owner of the car aware of these things he's gonna watch this video too so any other uh, concerns that you guys have for this temporary fix um, we would love to hear your thoughts on this um, I, at this point, I'm gonna wire up uh, this resistor, just uh, solder it in. Uh, we've really shown you guys everything I think we need to show you, which is this is 100% confirmed um, that we have an EVAP temp sensor that was causing this issue. This is the longest we've had the air on, wouldn't you agree, Caleb? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see the interior temperature sensor uh, number start dropping. I'm not sure why it is not. We're at 82.4 right now on that one. It hasn't really changed. It's really not important to me, to be honest with you. I wonder what my actual temperature is right now. So I'm just put this to auto and I put it at 70. So the other thing that's not gonna work well is the auto feature because with the 
evap temperature or no that'd be the temperature blend door that's really controlling that i don't like this fix guys and to the owner who's going to watch this i don't like this fix this this is a this is a fix that uh is not a fix this just proves a faulty evap temp sensor and uh there's a very good chance that this is already icing up yeah, it can happen pretty fast so but hope you guys like this one i'm gonna put this back together off camera i'll solder that that resistor in one more shot down here caleb on where we're gonna do this we're just gonna take this is the main ground for the unit and i could have used sensor ground but i didn't have the diagram pulled up for sensor ground i have no problem um using the um main ground itself because this is not really right anyway and we're gonna put this resistor we're gonna we're gonna put this one i keep leaning on that between the signal i'll get my hand out of the way in a second between the signal wire and the module ground and you see that my evap temperature is now back at 73 degrees that's it we'll solder that we'll tape it and we'll give it back to them and then when we fix this the right way down the road when the whole dash got to come out we'll refix this wire down here and all we need to do quick shot down here caleb we'll just restore connection between the temp sensor signal wire and the computer and then we'll um uh, just use some liquid tape on that part and be good to go so at least at least they'll be able to use the the air conditioning system for now and um you know have somewhat of a functional system so yeah that was fun um not really parts of it <laughs> pulling the dash panels off is never fun but we did that off camera so you, didn't, you guys didn't have to hear me cuss and caleb didn't have to bleep all those parts out so Am I forgetting anything else? I mentioned measuring the resistance of the resistor that I put in there. Um, it's really not important. Uh, at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, should I measure it for everyone? What's the resistor we put in there? Probably should at least get them that number. In case anybody wants to follow in my tracks here. So we're gonna use the ohm meter part of the, of the scope. Then let's get off the split screen. Split screen feature is pretty nice. I like it. Turn the key off. We don't want any voltage going through that circuit. We want to get out of the lab scope and go to the multimeter. And we want resistance. We'll zero the probe. Okay and then just get a reading across the resistor is all we're gonna do. So 33,000 ohms, that resistor that I put in here is a 33,000 ohm resistor, 33.18. Tape, little tape, and should have put a heat, piece of heat shrink over top of that. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. I don't even think that was right. Shoulda, woulda, coulda? I don't think that's right. It's absolutely right. I think it's shoulda, coulda, woulda. No, it's not. Is it woulda, coulda, shoulda? Coulda, woulda, shoulda. I only have red tape with me right now, so that's what we're using. We do have cold air. It does feel nice in here. I wonder how much we're freezing up the evap right now. Pretty sure it's. Are you still thinking about that? Yeah, <laughs> I'm stuck on what makes the most sense. Well, I'm sure it's coulda, woulda, shoulda. What did you say? I think that's what I said. Uh, let's say that that's not what you said. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. So my friend Bill, who's watching this, this is his daughter's car. Make sure you pay attention to the comments in this video for any concerns about what we're doing here. Now, we know for a fact that this EVAP core is going to ice up. There's going to be times it's going to ice up. But as I was ex explaining to my brother, 
it's not an internal restriction. You're still gonna have refrigerant flow. You're gonna have an externally iced up evap core from water and uh, it's just not gonna cool. You're gonna have restricted airflow and then it's, uh, it's not gonna cool properly. I believe that's the only thing that we have to worry about. Here we go. Makeshift, makeshift repair. I guess the, the last thing is gonna be, let's kill this and let's plug the old module back in, make sure we're still seeing the 73 degrees. The reason I don't want to use the aftermarket module is these can be programmed um, to the car and I'd rather keep the one that's supposed to be with the car with the car because I'm not doing any programming. Let's start it. Seventy three degrees. Turn the air on. Notice our air conditioning status looks good. While we're putting this back together will be our our test period as far as temperature and flow and freezing and that temp sensor talking to the owner here too bill is up behind this piece in the back but this piece is bolted all the way across and so you have to pull the entire dash to get that out to get to the evap temp sensor this is stupid you'd think they'd make a evap temp sensor a little bit easier to get to but you know that's the manufacturers for you and you had this weird tether piece of plastic that was holding this in place. What? Yeah, that's what, when you were gone, Caleb, and got food, I couldn't get this out because it was holding it back from the inside right here. And this is bolted down underneath. I had to crawl Dude. underneath to unbolt this. How ridiculous is Well, that? I think that's for airbags. So the reason this is tethered mm -hmm. is if the bags would deploy so yeah. this piece doesn't become a projectile. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's why they do it. Yeah, it is strange. But that's what needed to be done to get that out of there. Well, at least it's nice and cold in here now. Last time we used the um, the scope for the auto, I had I had complained. Uh, at least this was on the premium channel. We did a a video where I was complaining about being tethered to the lab scope, and it, you know it's my own fault. Uh, for not knowing the tool. The tool has a capability of connecting Wi-Fi, um, which doesn't interrupt your regular Wi-Fi to the internet, which is cool. Um, but between the scope and my tablet, I am connected right now via Wi-Fi. And that's pretty cool. The other thing is the scope uses battery voltage from the car, which is pretty awesome. So I had another thing that I had complained about not liking that the scope wasn't part of the of the scan tool you know the tablet itself because that's what i'm used to with the varus but um i guess one of the perks of this method is for the lab scope itself and all the functions we're taking battery voltage from the car through the data link connector for the lab scope so that's pretty cool air is still nice and cold yeah what a goofy design with that tethered piece in there man Air still nice and cold. I'd imagine on a real hot, humid day like today, evap core icing is not a problem. It's gonna be when it's 60 degrees, 65 degrees, you're using defrost and the air is cold to begin with. I think that's really when you're gonna have issues with icing. Okay, that's in the right position. Before I bolt that up, I gotta make sure that this is positioned right. Okay, two bolts by your feet. There might be three by your feet. I see two. Oh, three. Yeah, the longer one goes on the side over there. So I'll throw that down there for now. And these go up here. 
Air is nice and cold. It's super bad. The key is gonna be for his daughter to, to know that this is an issue with this car and that she's gonna need to, oh shoot. Did I, I didn't do the bolts up here. Dumbass. Or did I? Did I bolt the ones in up here? I don't know. Oh no. No. I did. I bolted those up. Yep. Anyway, the key is gonna be that his daughter understands what's going on and, and understands to, at times, very simply shut the AC compressor off. You can leave the blower on. All right, so blower can stay on. I still have nice cold air coming out of the out of the vents. So let's say she's driving down the highway for a period of time. You know, she's gonna want to on occasion you know, leave the blower on, but turn the AC button off, and that will allow it to de-ice. And you can really base it off of the temperature of the vents. Still pretty decently cold air, and then as that air warms up. As long as the flow is still good, then go ahead and turn the air back on. And I just did. And if you find it where the airflow is restricted, you have the blower at max and you can't hardly feel any air, you need to leave the AC off for a longer period of time to de-ice that EVAP, and then you can turn it back on. All right, the rest of this I'm gonna button up because um, Caleb's in my way, I got one bolt I took out on the side that didn't need to come out and then I just got to put all their stuff back in and and we're done so that's it for today guys um, anxious to hear your comments on what we did and then any other concerns that we want to share with the customer again this is a temporary fix sometimes temporary fixes end up being permanent fixes aren't they <laughs> Caleb <laughs> but hey this is the the trade-off to not fixing it at all so guys thanks for joining us Caleb thanks for being cameraman this one ended up being pretty good. So we'll see you guys next time.